Hello ladies and gentlemen, in today's video I'll show you how you can create these animated gauge charts with scrolling numbers and clickable buttons in PowerPoint. So let's go! Alright my friends, so let's jump into PowerPoint and first of all a little bit of information about colors and fonts that we'll be using. And as you can see I'll be using the Montserrat font family and in some cases I'll be using the Montserrat semi bold weight, these are usually for subtitles. And for the slide titles I'll be using Montserrat extra bold and in this case 125 points. And please note that I have set my slide size to full HD which is 67.73 centimeters for the slide width and 38.10 centimeters for the slide height. And that is why this text box with 125 points uh, looks the way it looks, because usually when you open up default PowerPoint presentation you would get 720p resolution, and this text box with 125 points uh, font size would look super huge, but now since we have full HD slide size this text box looks just alright. Ok, so just keep that in mind. And we'll be using two main colors, so the first one is this beautiful uh, dark purple color, you can see the hex value just below, and the second color is this beautiful pink one with the hex value below as well. And we'll be using these two colors to create these beautiful uh, gradient fills for our text and shapes. And as well we'll be having some animations, so I'll show you how we can create this clickable button. And the main event of the night is going to be this animated uh, gauge chart, so there are a couple of animations going on, so let me rewind once again. So first of all we have these uh, scrolling numbers at the bottom, I'll show you how we can do that. Next we have this arrow in the center which is uh, moving at the same time with the chart as well, so we have a couple of animations and I'll show you how we can do all of that. Ok, so let's open up a fresh blank new presentation and let's go to insert and let's look for charts, ok. Let's go to pie charts and let's uh, select this one called donut and let's click ok. Alright and the donut chart has been inserted and as you can see currently we have uh, 4 parts at this donut and we need just 2 parts so we can delete this 3rd and 4th rows, we can just uh, select them, right click and choose delete and let me just rename these guys, so for the first row let me just call it visible because this is going to be the visible part of our chart and the second part is going to be invisible, so let's just call it invisible, ok. And now for this uh, column let's just rename it to values, and for this first row let me just type in 100, alright. And let's do the same for the second row, ok, and this is how our donut chart looks like currently, so the visible part should be this dark purple on the right side, and the invisible is this one on the left side, so let's actually make it invisible, let's make sure that we select this part on the left side, and now let's go to format shape uh, settings, let's find the fill options and let's uh, just choose no fill for this uh, part on the left side. So now we just basically have the visible part. And now let's delete any of the chart elements that we don't need, such as the legend and chart title, alright. And now let's rotate this chart so that it looks something like this, alright. So let's make sure that we select this part, this chart part on the right side. And now let's go to series options and let's look for angle of the first slides. As you can see currently it's set to 0 degrees, so let's try inserting 90 degrees, not quite there yet. Let's insert 180, let's try 270, and this looks just about right, that's beautiful. And now let's add a gradient fill to this uh, chart, let's go to fill options, let's choose gradient fill, and as you can see PowerPoint has automatically applied my last uh, created gradient which uses our two beautiful colors, dark purple and pink. And now let's just right click on the chart and let's go to edit data, let's do a little bit of automation in this little excel window. So currently we have uh, 100 uh, value for the visible part and 100 value for the invisible part. So in total we have 200, ok? So let's actually automate the invisible cell, let's just type in equals 200 minus and let's click on the B2 cell and click enter. So this way we have inserted a formula, so whenever we type a new value for the visible cell, let's for example try 50, as you can see the chart updates and the invisible part is 150. So let's try something else, let's try 75 and invisible part is 125. 
So this is just a little automation that will help us to save some time and we won't have to insert invisible value manually each time. So that's super awesome. And next, my friends, let me show you how we can create these little white lines and create this kind of striped look for our chart. And for that, first of all, let's just activate uh, guides so that we can see where's the center and middle of the slide. OK, your chart should be sitting in the center just like that. And now let's go to insert shapes and let's choose the simple rectangle tool and let's just draw a thin uh, rectangle just like that. And for the height, let's insert something uh, really small, for example, 0 0.25 centimeters, and let's align it to the middle and center of the slide. Now let's duplicate this rectangle. You can hit Ctrl D to duplicate. And now let's rotate this uh, second rectangle by 5 degrees. OK. And let's align the second rectangle to the middle and center of the slide as well. And now let's duplicate once again. And now let's add 5 more degrees. So this time it's going to be 10 degrees. And let's continue duplicating and rotating these small rectangles. So each time you have to add five more degrees and just keep on going until you have a full circle. And to save some time, I have already created all of these little rectangles in advance. So let me just delete these four guys and let's just select all of these guys. Hit Ctrl A and Ctrl C to copy and let's paste them into our slide just like that. OK, we can turn off the slide guides. And now let's try filling all of these rectangles with white color and let's see what happens. And as you can see, this way we have created this striped look to our chart. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. And what's awesome is that you can easily change the look of your stripes by selecting all of these rectangles and changing, in this case, the height of the rectangles. Let's make it super small. 0.05 centimeters. And now all of the stripes are looking super thin. That's awesome. Just keep in mind that once you change the width or height of your rectangles, you have to realign them once again to the center and middle of the slide so that everything looks OK. And now once again, let's just fill all of these little rectangles with a white fill. And let's see what kind of effect do we have now. OK, so let's make sure that we select everything except the chart. OK, let me play it on the full screen. Now we have this subtle, minimal looking stripe effect on our chart. That's awesome. And you might be wondering why haven't we used just the simple lines to create all of these stripes. And the reason for that is that we have to use a couple of merge shape functions. And the first one is union. And you cannot do that with lines. You have to use shapes such as rectangles. So let's make sure that all of these thin rectangles are united into one solid shape just like that. And now let's make the slide background black so that we can see better what we're going to do next. And now let's make these white lines appear only on the chart. Now, as you can see, these lines are all over the place, but we would like to have these lines appear only on the chart. And to achieve that, we'll have to insert a donut shape, select the white stripes, select the donut and use the intersect function. And for now, let's make this light background white. Now let's go to insert and let's look for the donut shape. Here it is. So let's hold down the shift key to draw a perfect uh, donut. Let's add a little bit of fill transparency. And let's uh, position this donut chart the center of the slide. And now let's make sure that we match the size of this donut shape to our chart. And you can hold down the Control Shift key to resize from the center. So we can first make sure that we match the outside edge. That's good. And now for the inside edge, we can use this little yellow handle. And that's looking pretty much perfect. That's beautiful. Let's zoom out. OK. And now let's make sure the slide background black once again so that we can see everything better. And now let's make sure that we first select these white stripes, then we select the donut shape. And let's go to shape format, merge shapes, and let's choose the intersect function. Skadoosh, ladies and gentlemen. And now all of these white stripes are appearing only on the chart. That's awesome. Let's turn on the white color for the slide background. And now I think we can continue with creating that little arrow in the center of our chart. So I have experimented with a couple of different designs, uh, for example, this one or this one. So feel free to style your arrow the way you want. And the first step is to create this little circle in the middle. So let's go to insert shapes and let's look for the circle shape. Here it is. Hold down the shift key for a perfect uh, circle. Let's align it to the center and middle of the slide. And to save some time, let me just select uh, this circle. Let's hit Control Shift C to copy the style. And let's apply the same style to this guy. Hit Ctrl Shift V to apply the style. That's beautiful. And the shadow settings that I have used for this little circle are the following. So feel free to use the same settings if you wish. And I have used this uh, hot pink color for the shadow. Okay. 
All right, so the next step is to create uh, this uh, little arrow and to create this little arrow, we'll be using a shape called trapezoid. So let's go to insert shapes and let's look for trapezoid. So usually when you are inserting a trapezoid, uh, the shape looks like this. But in this case, to create this little arrow, let's make it uh, really thin, just like that. Okay, and now let's bring this guy to the center of this light, just like that. And we might as well send it to back so that it is uh, behind this little circle. Okay, and once again, to save some time, let me just grab the styling from my previously created uh, arrow. And let's apply it to our trapezoid. Really fun word, trapezoid. And if you're having a hard time selecting your trapezoid, just use the selection pane and hit Ctrl Shift V to apply the style. Super duper awesome. Okay. So now I think we can uh, select uh, the little arrow and the little circle. And we can group them into one group. Okay. Select them. Hit Ctrl G to group. And now let's make sure that we create a new rotation center for this little arrow because currently, as you can see, this arrow rotates like this. Uh, this is not how it's supposed to look like. So uh, let me show you how we can fix that. First of all, let's reset the rotation angle to zero degrees. And now let's just insert a circle. So let's just go to insert shapes. Let's look for the circle tool. And now let's just hold down the shift key to draw a perfect circle. We can uh, add a solid line. Let's remove the fill. Let's center align the circle and now let's uh, hold down the control shift key to resize this circle. Let's just make sure that this big circle is big enough and that it covers our little arrow and this little circle. Now let's make sure that we select the arrow, the little circle, the big circle and group them into one group. And now as you can see the rotation center is uh, fixed and the rotation is looking super awesome. Okay, so once again let me reset the rotation to zero. And for this big circle, we can actually uh, choose no line because we don't uh, need to see that line. Okay, and now let me jump into the selection pane and let me rename all of these uh, shapes so that it is easy to understand what is what. And now let's actually rotate this arrow to its starting position so we can hold down the Alt key and hit the left arrow key on the keyboard to rotate it. All right. And now it's a good time to decide what kind of value we would like our chart to display. So let's go to Edit Data. And for the visible row, let's insert any value that we wish, for example, 75 and let's hit enter. And as you can see, the chart updates automatically. That is beautiful. And once again, let's remember what kind of animations we'll have to create. So as you can see, this chart basically comes from the bottom like this and it spins. So we will have to insert a spin animation. And before we add the spin animation, first, let's make sure that we flip this chart vertically. And to do that, we can just adjust the position or the angle of the first slice. Now it's set to 270 degrees and let's type in 90 degrees. And this basically flips our chart vertically. All right. So let's make sure that the chart is still selected. Let's go to animations. Let's look for spin animation. Here it is. Let's click on it. All right. So uh, let's uh, double click on the animation. Let's see what's going on. So for the smooth end, let's just add one second. All right, and for the spin angle, let's uh, use 180 degrees, okay? And now let's see what kind of animation do we have, okay? So as you can see, now the chart comes from the bottom and it stops with a little bit of smooth end. I think we just have to adjust the gradient direction. Let's make sure that the visible series are selected and let's go to fill options. And here is our gradient fill. And now let's just change the gradient direction. I think this one is the correct one. So let's check out the animation once again. And yes, now we go from this dark purple color to the pink color. That's beautiful. Okay. So let's turn on the slide guys once again. And as you can see, of course, uh, we should not see the chart at the bottom. We should cover it somehow. And for that, once again, we will be using the donut uh, chart. Not donut chart, the donut shape. Okay, let's make sure we align it to the center of the slide. This time we don't have to be super precise. So let's just make sure that we cover the chart. Okay, and now let's insert a uh, rectangle. Let's make sure that it covers the top half of the donut shape, just like that. Okay, now let's select the donut shape. Let's select the rectangle. Let's go to shape format, merge shapes, and let's use subtract. And this way we have created a mask for our chart. Okay, so let's make sure there is no transparency and let's set our uh, chart mask to white. Okay. And this way we have uh, hidden 
or covered the chart okay and in the selection pane let's give it a proper name let's call it chart cover just like that and now the animation looks like this as you can see now the chart comes from the bottom and it spins and after that it stops with a little bit of smooth end that's beautiful all right now let's apply a spin animation to our little arrow let me just uh, hide the chart cover for now so that uh, we can see the chart okay let's select the chart Let's go to animations and let's use the animation painter and paste the same spin animation to our little arrow. That's beautiful. Now we'll just have to do a couple of adjustments. First of all, let's make sure it starts uh, with the previous. Okay. By the way, in the selection pane, we can activate the chart mask once again. Okay. And now let's continue adjusting the arrow spin animation. And as you can see, currently the rotation angle is set to 180 degrees, but we would like this arrow to stop at 75%. And what should be the correct angle and to find out the answer we can just multiply 180 by 0 0.75 and we get 135 so let's use 135 let's go for custom angle let's type in 135 and let's click ok super awesome let's uh, check out the animation options once again everything is looking beautiful okay and this is how the animation looks like so as you can see the arrow ends at the correct position but the animation, the arrow animation starts too fast. So to fix that, we can add a little bit of smooth start. Let's try 0 0.75 and click OK. All right. And let's check out the animation once again. And now it looks like as if the arrow and the chart are moving at the same speed. That's awesome. You could as well try adding a little bit of delay for the arrow spin animation. But I think the smooth start option works really well. All right, my friends, so the next fun animation part is creating these scrolling numbers. So once again, let's check out how the animation looks like. So as you can see, some of the numbers are scrolling faster and some of them are scrolling slower. So let me show you how we can create all of that. So first of all, let's just insert a text box. OK, so let's uh, right away increase the font size to 88 so that we can see what we're typing. And now let's just type in the numbers from 0 to 9 and let's type all of these numbers in one column. Let me just uh, change the font. Let's use Montserrat Semi Bold and let's change the font color to our beautiful dark purple color. Let me just move this text box a little bit upwards so that we can see what we're typing. So let's type in 9. And let's type in 0 at the end as well so that we have 0 in the beginning and 0 at the end. And let's position it somewhere just below this arrow. Let's duplicate it so that we have two columns of text just like that. We can as well activate these slide guides and make sure that both of these text boxes are sitting perfectly in the center of the slide. You can as well use your arrow keys to move them right and left. Okay. And now let's select this text box on the left side. Let's jump to selection pane and let's rename it. Let's call it, for example, tens. So these are going to be our tens numbers like 10, 20, 30, and so on. And let's call the text box on the right side once. So these are going to be our single numbers. And for the tens, we can actually delete zero because we don't need it. We just need zero on the once text box. Okay, now let's make sure that the tens uh, text box is selected. Let's click Add Animation and let's choose a line motion path. Let's choose Direction Up. Okay, and in the Animation pane, let's make sure that this motion path animation starts with previous together with the rest of animations. And now we can grab this uh, red arrow, which becomes a red bubble. And now hold down the Shift key to scroll in a direct line upwards, just like that, until number 7 is aligned to number 0 on the right side. Just like that. Now let's jump into the motion path animation options and let's see what's going on. So for the smooth start, let's use zero seconds and let's just have a one second of smooth end. And this is how the animations are looking so far. And of course, later on, we'll have to add some covers so that we can cover up our numbers. And before we continue, let me just slightly adjust the ending position of this text box on the left side. I think number seven should be a little bit lower, just like that. All right. Looking beautiful. And now we can use the animation painter and paste the same animation from the left text box to the right text box, okay? But of course, we'll have to do some adjustments. So let's make sure that we select the motion path animation for the text box on the right side. And let's make sure that we adjust the ending position of this animation. And this time, let's uh, match the beginning zero with the ending zero, okay? And let's see how the animations are looking so far. All right, and of course we'll have to make it 75, not 70, but we'll do that in a moment. 
And now let's change the animation duration for the once text box. Let's insert 0.25 seconds, so which is really short time for animation. Let's make sure there's no smooth end, no smooth start. And in the timing tab, let's insert a repetition of four times, okay? And with the help of these little four repeated animations, we'll be able to create this fast scrolling effect. That's awesome. And now let's make sure that we select this text box on the right side and let's add one more motion path line animation to it, okay? So let's make sure that this uh, last uh, motion path animation starts with previous. Let's as well add a delay of one second, okay? And let's make the duration one second. All right, so the once text box should have two animations. And for the smoothing, let's just have a smooth end of one second. All right, let's click OK. And by the way, for the last motion path animation, let's make sure that we choose the correct direction. So the last animation is selected. Let's go to direction options and let's choose up. And now we can see this uh, red arrow or this red bubble. And now let's make sure that number five lands where number zero is. OK, because we want to have 75. And let's make sure that duration is still one second. That's good. Let's check if the animation options are looking good. So there should be just one second for the smooth end. All right. Okay, the rest of the animations are looking beautiful. And this is how the animations are looking so far. And of course, we have to insert some uh, number covers so that everything looks uh, right. So let's go to insert shapes and let's choose a rectangle tool and let's just draw a rectangle so that it covers uh, all of the numbers except the number zero. Okay. So for now we can leave it purple. We will change it to white uh, later on. And now let's make a duplicate. And for this duplicate, let's bring it just uh, above the number zero and let's make sure it goes to the edge, to the top edge of the slide. And now let's make both of these guys white. Okay, so these are going to be our number covers. Let's jump to the selection pane and let's rename these guys so that we know which of them is which. Okay, number cover top and number cover bottom. All right. And by the way, we can select both of the number covers, uh, the tens and ones text boxes, and let's bring everything below the chart elements. And this is how the scrolling numbers are looking right now. Pretty awesome, my friends. Pretty awesome. Okay, so now let's continue with the rest of the details. And let me just grab this percentage sign from my previous slide to save some time. So this is just a text box with a percent sign in it. So let me just bring it close to this zero. Okay, looking beautiful. And now the chart and the scrolling numbers are finished. So we can just basically hit Ctrl A to select everything. And now let me paste all of these elements to my previously created slides. So here we have background. We have a couple of uh, slide design elements such as logo, footer and uh, other interesting details. So let me just paste our beautiful chart into this slide. And let's move all of the chart elements to the bottom of the selection pane list. Just like that. And now we can uh, reposition this chart to any position that we wish. Okay, it looks good. And now let's make sure that we adjust the height of the number covers, especially the top number cover. So let's make sure that it touches the top edge of the slide, because otherwise numbers would be visible and we don't want that. Okay, so let's check out the animations. Let's see if everything is working correctly. And it seems that everything is working as expected. That's awesome. All right, my friends, and next let me show you how we can make this clickable button. So basically we have two identical rounded rectangles with different styling. So one button is called premium color and the other one is called just premium. Now let's make sure that both of these rounded rectangles are perfectly aligned. Let's make sure that premium color rectangle is selected. Let's go to add animation. Let's choose shape for the direction. Let's choose out. Now let's go to animation pane and let's make sure that the duration is set to one second. And let's add a trigger. So this animation will be triggered once we click on the premium rounded rectangle. So which basically means once we click on the white uh, rectangle, we will see the color version. And this way we can create this uh, nice looking click effect. All right. And the last thing that I'd like to show you is how to animate this little bubble with a comment. Okay. So let's make sure that we select this uh, circle. Let's go to add animation. And let's go to more entrance animations and let's choose basic zoom. Okay. So let's make sure that this basic zoom animation starts with previous. Okay. For delay, let's try adding 1.3 seconds. And for the duration, let's use half a second. 
Alright my friends, so let's check out the final result on the full screen, so the chart animation and the number animation is working as expected, that's super beautiful, and we have this little common bubble at the end, and the clicking animation is working as well. That's awesome. And by the way, I have created this green version with a 100% chart, so let me show you how it works. So basically everything is identical except one thing is that we have three numbers. So to create three numbers, you would have to create three text boxes. And by the way, today's tutorial slides, the purple version and the green version will be added to the bonus slides section of my modern PowerPoint template class on Skillshare. Link is in the video description. Alright my friends, thank you for watching. Now you know how you can create these animated beautiful charts with scrolling numbers in PowerPoint. Stay happy, stay healthy, and I'll see you on my next video. Peace.